welcome, welcome, one and all. Winter Wizard here. And in this video, it's time for me to unveil my secret fifth army. for joining me today whoever you are and welcome to this little video of mine where I'm going to be unveiling my secret fifth army it is cold and lonely here in Winter Wizards Frozen Fortress but uh, just made a nice cup of tea over there Terran Gold and we're joined as always by my comrade and co-host Norwegian Troll Dimu so and we've got a We've got an exciting video for, for you today. Um, that's right, we're not going to beat around the bush too much with this one. We're going to dive straight into the video. Um, I just want to very quickly explain what's going on and how this is all going to work. So you may well have seen the teaser video that I did last week. Um, uh, you have been deceived and uh, yes, I'm afraid you have. I did. I lied to you. Um, I am sorry, but you know what, I'm, I'm a demon now, so uh, what's up? Um, but, so I, I have in fact been keeping something on ice uh, for quite a while now, and and that is a fifth army, and that's what I'm going to be showing you today. Um, I'm going to be unveiling the army for you, uh, I'm going to be explaining and talking about the turn of events and the decision making process behind starting this project. Uh, we're going to have a chat about colour schemes and model choices and the overall theme and the narrative of the army. Uh, but not only that folks, not only that, no, I am, a, I am a generous, I am a generous demon at the end of the day. And I do in fact have uh, just over 2,000 points of fully built, fully painted, fully finished models for you today. So, And I'm going to show you every single one of those here today. So that's the order of business for us today. So my friends, all I'll say now is please sit back, relax, enjoy the ride. And first of all, allow me to commence this unveiling with a short cinematic piece. All things begin in darkness. A seed in murky soil. An embryo in armoured shell. A fetus in a mother's womb. Then we are born. The first ray of light. The first breath of air. The first waking thought. Yet in that moment, something else is born too. Something inside you. Something within you woven into the very web of your soul. Like streams of water in green fields. Like the oozing sap in the bark of trees. Like the pumping blood in a body's veins. It keeps you alive and in turn, you keep it alive. Nothing is me, your passenger, your shadow, your echo. 
Who am I? I am spring. And spring is nature finding a way. Spring is hope, resolve and purpose. Spring is the unrelenting will to survive. Spring is evolution, adaption, ascension. Spring is metamorphosis, mutation and transformation. Spring is birth, life and inevitable death. Spring is past, present, and future. Spring is chaos. Spring is change. Okay, there we go. My friends, you have been deceived. Allow me to give you the fifth faction on Winter Wizard 7, the fifth faction, my secret project, the Thousand Suns. The Thousand Suns, here they are. And for the first time on this channel, for the first time in channel history, I will now utter these words. Um, I'm very excited, but um, my friends, I give you the Exalted Court of spring the exalted court of spring the exalted court of spring so let's uh, first of all let me talk about um, let me talk about my journey into starting a thousand sons army but basically at the start of 2022 I did say that I wasn't going to start a new faction and I wasn't you know I was just going to spend my time working on the armies that uh, that I already had uh, trying to build up the collection build up um, theme forces of them and I have been doing that I have been exp you know I have been um, still working on those on those factions of course I have I when, whenever I start a new army I, I never put the ones behind um, uh, the, the, I never put the previous armies behind, you know, I, I never, they don't get shelved, they don't get ignored, um, they, they're, they're still very much part of the hobby. It just means that I, that I take on a new thing as well, and I'm sure that the other factions will probably get a little less focus, but that's usually because I've got, like, over 2,000 points of them anyway, so I might add bits and bobs, but, um, we'll start a new one, so, um, but, um, I, uh, there's so many factions out there that I um, that I, that I would love to have a go. At. I just couldn't resist. Um, I didn't want the pressure of having to share any of this on the channel. Um, and I thought, you know what? Um, if I if I do start a new army, then perhaps I could just keep it keep it secret and uh, just unveil it when uh, when I've got a uh, when I've got a full full collection of them, and the Thousand Suns was probably a good one to do with that. You know, the the changer of ways, the weaver of fates, he's always up to his tricks and whatever. So, but yeah, there were so many different armies that I could that I could do. There's so many out there that I'd love to get my icy fingers into. That I'd love to have a go at. Uh, I, re I really, 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 really would. Um, the current armies: the Drown Plague, Forge Phobos, Frost Paws, Kepri Dynasty. By my counting, we've got um, we've got uh, one Chaos, two Imperium and one Xenos. So um, 
it kind of made sense to me to want to dip into either another Chaos or another Xenos faction just to bring a little bit of balance to the force. Um, you know what I'm saying? So, so and I and I was drawn. There were, as I said, there's so many armies out there that I would just absolutely love to go for. Um, but the Thousand Suns. Now, the Thousand Suns I have been thinking about for a very long time, as a matter of fact. Um, when I, even, even, even during the days where I only had the Drowned Plague, and that was my only army, that was the army I was working on, I did think to myself, maybe I could do a Thousand Suns army next. Um, but they got pushed aside by uh, some other projects that I wanted to do, you know, um, for Trifobos, it was the Skitari that were, were one of the big things that got me back into this hubby, those models, so I felt like I needed to do them next. Uh, the Space Wolves became my biggest love, needed them, then I needed a Xenos, so this is just what the Weaver of Fates has, has, uh, has decided, but um, now the time for a Thousand Suns Army has come. But um, as I said, I, I've always absolutely adored this model range. Now there's not a lot of it out there. Um, certainly nowhere near as much as the as the Death Guard. Um, very much much smaller uh, variety and choices of models, and that maybe held me back a little bit because I was like, um, well, I want. You know, I, I enjoy lots of the different units and things, and perhaps there's not a huge amount of choice, but um, but I thought there there is enough to start it, but maybe that also helped me back as well. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, it was going to happen at some point, because, I mean, the Thousand Suns, it's a bunch of space wizards. I mean, what can I say? Um, how, how could that not resonate with me? <laughs> you know? There, and I do love the lore behind them. I absolutely love the lore behind the Thousand Suns. Um, Magnus, yeah, I'm sorry, mate. You definitely did do something. You definitely did something wrong, Magnus. I'm, I'm sorry about that. I'm not one of those Thousand Suns people who. <laughs> no, but Araman, he's he's the uh, he. This cat, he is absolutely, he's amazing. We do love the Aramans. Um, Araman is the boss. And the rubrics, the sort of dusty boys, the uh, the shadows of warriors. I mean, the art in this is absolutely fantastic. They always are in these books. But the sort of yeah, you know, the sort of uh, like alternate realm of magic and yeah, the vibes and the themes of it all—they're just absolutely amazing. These courts of sorcerers, of magicians. They got a bit of that ancient Egypt type theme in, which I always loved, but uh, I didn't go for that. I didn't go that route with this army. I've got my, I've got Kepri Dynasty for that. Oh, look at that! It's absolutely gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. You know, the the demons, uh, the Zinch demons are actually some of my favourite demons. I think out of the four flavours of demons, I think I'm actually always been really, really. Really keen on the Thousand Suns ones. Um, not so much. Well, I like the Zangles. Don't get me wrong. I like Zangles. Nothing wrong with a Zangle. Uh, big goat chicken. Fine by me. Uh, but it was all the, uh, the the Zinchi Demon stuff that I really quite liked. Now, interestingly, saying that, I don't actually have any of those models in my force. Uh, we'll get to that. Oh, we'll get to that, but um, maybe one day I could have a, a could have a Zinch Demons Army. I think the thing is, if I'm going to do a Demons Army, I'd probably want to do an. Uh, sorry, if I'm going to get some Demons into my collection, I'd probably actually want a, uh, you know, a pure Demons Army. So I've never really put any Demons in with the with the Drowned Plague as well. So any Nurgle Demons in with them, and I may tinker with that, but. But I've never felt the need to want to cross, um, you know, take an allied force of demons with my Death Guard. So uh, maybe one day we could actually do a pure demons army. Chaos Undivided. Now I have really enjoyed playing lots of games with the Thousand Suns. I've played quite a few games. Uh, the Major and I, my dear brother, my own flesh and blood. Um, we, went to, uh, we went to Warhammer World earlier this year. And... We had a fantastic game, fantastic game, 
uh, of uh, the Majors, Black Templars versus the Thousand Suns. That's a that's a really tasty combo, actually. Black Templars versus Thousand Suns. Uh, the Major and I, we we played this game quite a few times, and there's something about that matchup which just just really really tasty, really nice. But yeah, I have really enjoyed playing with the Thousand Suns. They're they're a hard nut to crack, you know. I think my first couple of games with them I was a bit of a mess, <laughs> but um. I really love the whole, I feel like a high sorcerer in a great, in a big tower, you know, pouring over books, um, pouring over books and ancient scrolls and ancient texts to come up with all these wonderful powers and relics and stuff and yeah, it's absolutely wonderful. Very intrigued to see what they're going to do with the Thousand Suns in 10th, I hope, uh, I hope they still feel sorcerous. Sorceress and uh, magic -y. We'll see about that. We'll see about that. So, uh, but yeah, I've, I've always had the soft spot for for the Thousand Suns. I absolutely love the models, the rubrics, the scarabs, the exalted sorcerers, uh, all those sculpts. Absolutely stunning. And I just knew that one day um, I, I would have to get my, myself a Thousand Suns army, uh, an army of space wizards, and. Uh, and so we've done that now. So very shortly we're going to start bringing out some models. I just want to talk about a couple of little things first. Uh, I want to talk about painting and modelling. Um, again, it got to the point where, with the four armies that I already had, uh, I got to a point where, again, I just felt like I really wanted to paint something completely, totally different. Uh, use a set of co a colour palette, a set of colours that I've never used before. Um, create a theme that I've never never even closely touched upon um, and I wanted to do something really unique and something is just, just something really really unique and you may have noticed in the in the little cinematic piece earlier in this video that there were there, there were a few a few a few odd a few odd faces in the uh, in the pictures there um, not only thousand suns but Sylvaneff Sylvaneff found their way into into this army so I've always had an idea of doing basically a thousand sons army but using Sylvaneth models as the demons now maybe that's piqued your interest or maybe you've just rolled your eyes and thought oh for crying out loud um, but just go with me on this one alright because uh, I think it's been executed um, pretty pretty well because I think a lot of the models have just seem to they just seem to fit but we'll get we'll, we'll get there as I start bringing them out but um so so my friends we have in fact crossed over into the realm of Age of Sigmar but we're not playing Age of Sigmar and I have I don't really have I have no intention of making this channel anything but 40k that's always what it what it's been that's the focus It's a 40k channel but um, when I was getting back into the hobby in 2018 um, I was either gonna start by playing Age of Sigma or by playing 40k um, and if I had gone down the 40k route as I did um, it was gonna be the, uh, it was gonna be Death Guard or Admech and ended up being the Death Guard but if I had gone down the Age of Sigma route my first army would have been the Silver Nef. Because I absolutely adore that model range. The Silver Nef are stunning, absolutely stunning models. And I wondered and wondered to myself, is there anything that I could do to get Silver Nef into 40k? And and I've done that now. Thousand Suns crossed with Silver Nef. And um just wait and see. There's my um, again. I'm going to stop talking in a minute. We're going to start bringing some models out. Sorry, I appreciate. It. I'm starting to ramble, but yeah. Um, well, you, you know what? There we go. I'm going to stop. <laughs> we'll, let's just bring some models out and uh, show you what we've got here. Um, so yeah, I'm going to bring out every unit, every model, and give you the full, complete showcase of the Exalted Court of Spring, my fifth army. We are so just had a swig of tea and we've just zoomed in here. We're going to start bringing out some models, models for you. So let's kick it off. Let's kick off the showcase of the Exalted Court of Spring uh, with uh, with the first unit that I bought, first unit that I painted, the unit that I that I um, used to crack the color scheme. Um, a simple squad of Rubric Marines. 
So here we are then, my friends. Allow me to introduce to you the exalted court of spring. So here we are then, my thousand suns crossed with Sylvaneth. Um, so, the colour scheme here, it's green, it's, uh, it's lush, there's uh, branches poking and growing out of the shells of these rubrics here. There's little tufts of flowers. The bases are grassy, with little blobs of water, flowers, twigs. I wanted to create a colour scheme. Let me bring it, I'm gonna just keep bringing out some models here. I wanted to create a colour scheme unlike anything else I've done before using different colours, different themes and really what I wanted to do was create I actually set myself a challenge to try and create an army that was pretty and I mean that like I wanted a I wanted a pretty army an army that was pretty but also had a darkness about it had a grim darkness grim dark pretty but still grim and dark grim dark pretty so the court of spring here exalted court of spring there it's all about the realm of spring now I'll tell you a little bit more about the lore in a bit, but um, but yeah, I, I imagine spring. Oh, that one's got the uh, icon of flame on the back there. Imagine the realm of spring is a uh, it's a demonic realm, demonic realm. There's the rest of the rubric marines there. So we've got ten rubric marines. Absolutely beautiful models. I absolutely had a great time painting these. Um, as always, the most stressful and uh, frustrating part of the hobby for me is trying to crack the colour scheme. <laughs> it's always really, always really stressful to me. Um, but the payoff is worth it. The payoff is worth it. So that's the whole squad of rubrics there. Uh, I think next up I'll bring out some some scarab occult terminators. Let's show you some terminators. So next up, Scarab Occult Terminators. There we go. Terminators here. The big tree growing out his back there. This cape is actually from one of the Exalted Sorcerer's boxes. Um, I've got so much mileage out of all these various kits and models. Really, really try to utilize every little piece that I, that I could. There's one with a Soul Reaper cannon. And the Hellfire Missile Rack on the back. There we go. Uh, some more here. All sorts going on with this chap. I'll give you a nice big uh, full showcase at the end as well. We'll focus in on the different units and then uh, have a nice big look at the whole army at the end. So there's another one. He's really covered in all these bits of tree. It's almost like the trees are sort of growing in them. Because uh, one of the things that I wanted to represent was that um, they're all part of the realm of spring. So it's not like they're just terminators walking through these this lush, lush fields. Um, they are as much part of this environment as everything else is. They are all part of the realm. They're all being corrupted by this, by the seeds of life. These dark seeds of life. There we go. So that's why I wanted to put all the or well, the shrubs and the flowers sort of growing out from various nooks and corners and crannies and these trees and plants growing out of them. That's one squad there. Got another squad here. There you go, another sorcerer. These these little uh, familiars here as well. These are all just little creatures and stuff that uh, that you get in the Sylvaneth range. We'll have a look at some uh, some actual Sylvaneffy stuff very shortly, but that's where all the trees and all the all the branches and and stuff and all the little creature familiars have come from. Um, all those things like oh yeah, this this sorcerer here, you'll see that he's got a third arm. Just poke it in there, maybe you can see that. Um, there we go. Another one there. 
Another. Another. I tried to give each one a bit of character as well, so sort of shrubs of the same sort of variety and flavour to try and make each one a, have a bit, a, a bit of character about them. Well, this one's got pretty pointy, chaotic, spiny stuff on him, whereas this one's got lots of much more sort of more elegant, prettier shrubs and leaves. Just little touches like that. So there's the Scarabacop template, yes. So in the realm of spring, um, um, it's all fueled by 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 some demon. It's all fueled by demon stuff, basically. Um, I'll talk about that more in a little bit. But um, so the demons and stuff in the in the sort of entity in the sort of dark force of spring is uh, they're, they're not the same as the other demons in the in the thousand suns stuff. They're their own little their own little pocket of uh, of demons and stuff. Um, but in game, I will use the sort of data sheets of the established stuff. Things like you know the Zangor, Zangor and Light and Cultists. Uh, I know Cultists aren't demons, but you know what I'm saying. So, um, but uh, so but in the realm of Spring, their own little strain of uh, of demon, uh, which I do use as Zangors in game. So this is my Zangor equivalent, uh, but I call them saplings, and uh, these would be the the tree revenants from. From the Sylvan F range. So I've got two squads of ten Zangors, saplings here. Uh, so these are two of the twist sprays. This was a special character from, um, I forget what it's called, Elaeth's Soul Raid, or I don't know what it was. I can't remember. There was a little, a, um, an underworld uh, kit with a very special sort of little group of Sylvan F warriors in it. Uh, this is one of the figures from that. Uh, and this is another twist spray. So these are the sort of Zangor, um, Zangor leaders. I've given them the big horns. All the others don't have the horns. Big horns and these sort of barky capes. Uh, or barky cloths, rather. Those are the two twist sprays. And we've just got a whole heap of... A whole heap of Zangors. With various weaponry. Really like the, uh, the sickles, actually. Sickles for uh, sowing the seeds of life. Sowing the seeds of life. Axes. There's one with a pick. To pick. Very cool. Such cool models. So these are the demons, really. These are the Zangor types. Uh, they're demons because they've got the sort of tree, the tree bodies, uh, but they've also got the. Um, We've got the ethereal parts to the body as well. That's sort of the bit that's done in the sort of glossy pink sort of colour. This is the ethereal, the etherealness to them, sort of demonic entity. And it's the same with like uh, the Thousand Suns, uh, sorry, with the rubrics as well. All the sort of like the warp fire and the warp, warpy stuff has got the sort of um, the pinky sort of glossy hue to it. Oh, I didn't mention that all the. Uh, there are all ten of my rubrics. I've given them all the flamers as well. Gotta love the warp flamers. Um, but there we go. Um, so, more of these. Let's just whip them all out here. Another one there. That's a quick. More sickles. More picks. And again, they've got all the shrubs and things growing them as well. More sickles. Yeah, I really like the sickle actually. As I just said, really great theme. Uh, I did a few little uh, tweaks in bash kit, kit sort of converting to stuff to make sure that none of them had the same. No two of them have exactly the same weapon. Um, well, actually, I think well, no, that's not quite true. Some of them do, but I, I did. Um, I tried to make some sort of subtle tweaks. So I put this one on the end of a spear or something to give him. Sort of slightly more unique flares. Now there are definitely copies of the same weapon here, but I've tried to make them. I've tried to make sure that no two models look the same, basically. There um, we go. Some swords. Very nice. Uh, another sword here. 
And then another one of the models that was from that special Underworlds uh, little little warband thing that I told you about is uh, this one here. This chap with the big axe. Very, very cool. So there's a few of the uh, the more unique looking Zangles in thrown in there and the other characters from that kit. I've just used their bodies and bits and bobs for various other stuff. So we've got a big squad of Zangles here, but very coolly, on your Zangle data sheet, uh, there's two upgrades that you can give. You can give them a banner and you can give them a bray horn, you know, a big, <laughs> big horn. <laughs> a big horn. Um, and luckily, what, what worked out really, really nicely is that in the Zang, in the um, tree revenants boxes you've got two upgrades as well and one of them is a banner like so there's one banner there there's another banner here and the other upgrade are these little pipes so it's, there's your bray horn there's your banner it's just perfect. This is what I mean by saying that the um, a lot of the a lot of the kits that I've used they've just seemed to just just crossed over perfectly. You've got all the right bits in there. A lot of the time they're on the right size. These are all these are all on the right size bases. The good size models, nice and tall actually. These things. If um, I get a, a rubric marine over here and a uh, one of these models, they're really nice and tall. They're almost they're about the same height, if not a little bit taller than the. Uh, than the space brain. It's a really unnatural, demonic sort of looking things. Very, very cool indeed. Um, there we go. So those be all the Zangors. So those be all the Zangors, or in this army they're called the saplings, the saplings of spring. So, uh, but there are actually two other Zangor type units in the codex. So um, those are those are the Zangor en Zangor Enlightened, and these are the ones that are on the uh, that bit of fluff. These are the ones that are on the discs. They're on the discs, and you can either give them the big sort of spears, or you can give them the bows. So I thought to myself, well, how can I how can I replicate Zangor Enlightened? And the answer, again, just it was it was so simple with these things, with these things, the Gossamid archers, absolutely gorgeous models. They're so cool. And instead of a disc, they've got wings. And what do you know? They've got a fake caster great bow. It's just perfect. Just, just perfect. I could, it was just, again, like, as I was saying, a lot of these models, it was just so easy to cross them over. As you zangle, as you zangle enlightened. But uh, in this army, you, this is your sapling, and this is your sapling bloomed. A bloomed sapling. Now we've got a few more of those. There's one. More gossamid archers. Lovely. A couple more. I absolutely, I, I, I know I keep saying it, I absolutely love these models. Such wonderful sculpts. They're a real pleasure to sort of paint as well. Real pleasure to paint. I've never painted anything like this uh, before. I've never painted any of the sort of natural sort of colours, you know, natural like earthies, uh, you know, foresty grass and trees and all that sort of stuff. So it was a real painting challenge for me to, to work all this out and crack this. Um, but I'm really pleased with how it's turned out. And again, they've got all the ethereal sort of bodies here. So the weapons are ethereal, the wings, all the all the creatures, the familiars, and these spiritual sort of body things, these demonic sort of forms, in this sort of glossy pink. But there we go, sapling bloomed, aka uh, Zangor enlightened. So in the exalted court of spring, uh, I kind of consider there to be sort of three three different groups of of beings. Uh, so we've got the we've got the Astartes. The Rubricae, the Scarabs, all the Astarte stuff. We've got the we've got the Zangors. Uh, where's the twist break on? We've got the Zangor style stuff, the saplings, you know. But there is another there is another branch of <laughs> hey, see what I did there. There is another branch of of beings. Um, and these would be the uh, the poor souls who have been who have been taken 
who have been taken by the, the powers that be and have been twisted and changed um, and have become something else so we're going to have a look at those now so the first form in this particular category would be your simple cultists so these would be the poor mere mortals the poor souls the poor human souls uh, who have been taken by spring they've been twisted they've been stretched and grown and changed and their skin turned to bark um, stretched to unnatural shapes and forms and they have become they have become the root spawn so I call these the root spawn uh, rootlings I suppose you call them but these would be the cultists these are these were mere mortals mere mere simple humans at one point so you see the difference here between the zangles the, the, the demonic stuff and the poor human souls who have been taken twisted and changed by the powers of Zinch um, to become this new form so the uh, these are the dryads from Silver Nef from the Silver Nef range so these these poor souls these are my cultist equivalent uh, cultist equivalent here the root spawn root spawn uh, and again just absolutely beautiful models so cool really pleased with the way they've come out they're sort of loincloths I've tried to do in a different barky colour it was quite it was quite interesting trying to work out how to create um, number of different colors but in the same so we've got a few different greens and a few different browns it's quite difficult trying to just sort of um, create some sort of um, interesting uh, different different um, differentiate uh, a word differences <laughs> visual differences um, so you know for the different greens because if you painted it all the same green it, it maybe it felt like it was a little bit plain um, it was just all the sort of similar green so trying to get the differences between the darker green verging into the brighter green and then doing the cloths in a different color that sort of barky brown um, yeah it took a lot of fiddling and a lot of working out this was I think the hardest color scheme to crack I am um, I literally I kid you not I bought every single every single pot of it's a hair. I bought every single pot of green uh, that Games, Walks, Games Workshop <laughs> walk. Let me try that again. Yeah, I kid you not, I literally bought every single pot of green that uh, Games Workshop produces trying to find the right colours trying to find the right colours for, uh, for the creatures here for, uh, for the, um, the armour I went through so many different varieties because I didn't want it to look too, too dull, uh, too natural, too well, not natural, but too, too dull or earthy. Uh, I didn't, I didn't want it to look too fluorescent green, but I did want it to look unnatural. I did want it to actually look unnaturally green um, some of the time. So. So we get that with like the, the the Astartes on their power armor and stuff here, this sort of unnatural green. And on the bases as well we get the unnatural green grass. Uh, you're going to see some bigger models in a bit and they're going to give you a really nice look at the, uh, at the bases. But, uh, so I'll save that discussion. Um, we'll pick that up again in a little bit. But there we go. Um, also, um, I, I've got the, the sort of blue water, water this sort of um, unnatural blue uh, watery blue eyes um, here and that was a really simple subtle little thing which I feel like just elevated the models as well just added that little extra pop of color just to break up all the green and the pink a bit a bit just to give it that little extra something and I'm really pleased with the result of that I think that really does if you've seen the, the models before where they just had pink eyes um, when I change it to blue it just really really seemed to work and just took the took the range took the uh, the scheme rather to a to a different place that I was far happier with and I try to resemble that so there's lots of uh, lots of difference um, lots of things crossing over here uh, between the colors uh, so we've got the 
we've got the brassy brownish the brownish brownish brassy metal going on here which I've then tried to represent with the with the sort of brownish sort of palish brownish colored um, loincloths and stuff there obviously all the tree tree bits are all painted the same uh, the blue eyes they've got blue eyes on the scarabs uh, and all the marine stuff as well but also their capes and stuff here have that sort of white bluish sort of watery color um, yeah I've really I've really put a lot of thought into trying to trying to blend it all together so that when you look at the force there's no mistaking that it that it all looks like one thing it all looks like one entity it doesn't just look like rubric marines sat there with silver F models it's all blended together all the colors are synced and in sync and matching or representative of each other um, it's, it, I've really put a lot of work into this I really have um, but there we go. I've got 16 um, root spawn here. The uh, the uh, the cultists, uh, the poor souls, there. But uh, there they are. I'm sure they're all right, really. Um, but but so what would happen if if we take uh, not a not a simple human, but an Astartes and take them through the same twisted changes that the poor root spawn have gone through? That, my friends, is where we will get our. Branch spawn, <laughs> branch spawn. So the root spawn, uh, the lots of little roots, or um, in numerous numbers, but the bigger, stronger, tougher branches here. The branch spawn. So this is what happens when you take a when you take an Astartes, a space marine, and twist him and take him through the same process that these poor poor souls have gone through. Um, and that there we go. These are, these are the Kernoff Hunter uh, models. Uh, these are absolutely wonderful again, and again you'll see the difference. Like you've got the uh, you've got this sort of flavour of of um, silver nephi stuff with the ethereal bodies. Then you've got this branch of stuff um, with the um, with the sort of uh, the Kernoff style bodies, and they've got the sort of demonic spiritual weaponry here as well. So being Astartes, they're capable of holding and wielding these demonic force weapons. Um, but there we go. So these are the Astartes that have gone through the change. Um, and these are in game, these are used as Chaos Spawn. So you have bigger, tougher, you know, tough as five, four wounds each, these Chaos Spawn models here. Um, and again, they're on exactly the right size bases. They're on exactly the right size bases. The 50 mil ones there, which is the spawn size base. So I've got a bunch of these, and again I went for the sickles, these are uh, like uh, scythe sickle type weapons, just thought they really lend itself to the, th to the, to the theme, um, you know the nature, sowing the seeds of life, um, there we go, so there's five, six, six of those, so six chaos spawn models so moving on from the root spawn and the branch spawn the uh, the chaos, the uh, the cultists and the uh, and the chaos spawn let's move back into the sort of realm of the astartes style stuff and have a little look at some some hell brutes so these two models I actually think are potentially my my two my two of my favorites in the whole collection i just had so much fun putting them together uh, I'm really, really pleased with the way that they've come out. And um, so these are my not hell brutes, but tree brutes. These are my tree brutes. So this chap here, this is Moot Beard. Moot Beard. Some sort of um, poor soul stuck in there, been turned into a big tree, or, or maybe they're just um, who, who really knows what's going on here? Some sort of witchcraft or demon stuff. Uh, this is a tree brute. Uh, a lot of the, all the pieces and stuff have been taken from uh, like the tree lords, uh, the tree lord ancient uh, Durthu. Uh, that that kit comes with like the big giant tree walking chap who, with three different variants in there. Uh, I've had about uh, three of those uh, kits, and I've, you get loads and loads of spare bits and pieces. And uh, that that was really all I've been doing with this collection is just buying some silver nav boxes and you just get so many extra bits uh, for all the converting all the conversion work and stuff um, but this is my cross between 
nature and machine. Um, oh yeah, this will give you a nice look here at the um, at the sigil on the shoulder there, of the Court of Spring. A little bit of freehand attempting there. I think they've come out okay. Uh, and he's covered in all these little. Oh, I loved these owls. These little owl creatures. Um, so this is Moot Beard, deep in thought um, about how he's how, how best to um, to stomp on your head. There we go. And then, this is one of the big fists that came in the uh, in the Tree Lord box. So that's a Tree Brute fist here. Um, we've got another one. So that's Moot Beard. And then this chap over here. This is Prongs. Prongs. Um, and the same sort of principle here. Machine meets nature. I think he's got a few more tree style bits replacing his limbs. So this whole his whole foot here. His whole foot has become a tree. Uh, he's missing a fair bit of armor. Here and there. Lots of tree style style things. Big piece on his back there. Really just trying to create the impression that they're you know they are certainly growing and turning and changing and twisting stretching into something else um, little tree stump there on the roof uh, that's one of the exhaust vents uh, and he's got his own little brand of familiars here so moot beards uh, got this little uh, flock of owls and um, prongs here he's got these I don't really know what they are these little creatures all crawling all over him and again multi melter and a hell brute fist plastic combo fantastic stuff and again that's the fist from the tree lord there um yeah it was it was really great fun trying to stick the heads in there uh, again i just absolutely love these two models um my wonderful tree brutes there we go so next up we'll have another look at uh, machinery meets nature uh, for a heavy sport choice. This is going to be a, not a forge fiend, but a forest fiend. <laughs> yeah, this is my forest fiend. Uh, there he is. He's absolutely covered in, in bits and bobs. Again, just zoomed out a, bit, a little bit just to give you a bit more of a wider view here. But there he is. My forest fiend with his triple ectoplasma cannon. And for the plasma, we've gone for that same sort of unnaturally watery blue colour. Um, the water of spring fueling the seeds of life. And he's got uh, he's got limbs here made out of wood, made out of trees, little claw there, made out of bark. He's covered in flowers and branches. Loads of bits of tree and bark just growing all over him, especially on the guns over here. Loads of stuff there. And he's got tree stumps as well that have kind of replaced his, uh, um, his exhaust vents. They're like chimneys. There's one on the roof there. Well, one at his back. It's not a roof, really. Yeah. So again, just really trying to create the sort of blend here between the machine and and nature. There he is. That's my lovely forage fiend, forest fiend. And you got an, a better look at some of the basing there. Again, there will be some other models coming very shortly where you'll get a lovely look at the base. But uh, this gives you a nice look at the green, uh, the green and the pink. Really liked that combo, green and pink. Um, and with the pink plates, uh, him on the um, on the machines and stuff, I tried to be just a bit more random. So there's a he's got a quite a big plate there. Uh, Moot beard doesn't have one of those, but he's got them elsewhere. You see. But yeah, absolutely loved smashing these these models together, machines and nature. So we'll move on now. So just had to zoom out a little bit more again because, uh, well, we're almost there with the with the full showcase here. I've got uh, a couple of two, well, I've got two big models to show, um, and then after that, I've got a series of characters, about five characters to show you. But so we're almost there. But so we zoomed out here to give room for a couple of vortex beasts. 
So the Mutilith Vortex Beasts, so they, those are the big huge warp spawn gribbly things. Um, it didn't really make sense for me to put that model in the um, in this particular army. Uh, I did have an idea or two about what model I could use to represent it, but it ended up just working out perfectly that the that the, uh, the, the ideal model would be basically a giant tree with a magic staff and some tentacles. So there we go. This is my Vortex Beasts, um, or as they're known in this particular strain of chaos, this is, these are Warp Ents. Warp Ents. And there they are. But yes, in game they use this Vortex Beasts, but it just made sense, perfect sense to do so, because the Vortex Beasts are there, spitting out these sort of like um, power type things. So he's got his powers with his staff here. And as well as that, uh, one of the other attacks, uh, well, when you're attacking with a Vortex Beast, he can hit you with uh, like a big fists or something, um, so i.e. I, this guy can stamp on your head, or he can use his, uh, his tentacle Mort, uh, and that's what these are. So again, it's perfect, just a little bit of kit bashing, a bit of changing of positions, a bit of tweaking to the arms here, but yeah, he's got his, um, he's got his shooting tentacles. And he's got his feet, and, uh, and uh, he's even on the correct size base here as well. Uh, I made I've made sure that every model in this army is all on the correct size base, uh, with the exception of um, one very very subtle thing. Uh, it's, it's, it's basically nothing, but uh, we'll show you that in a little minute. Um, there we go. He's got this like swarm of critters pouring out of his face. It's pretty cool. So I've tried to keep him with the the craziness. The scariness, chaoticness of it all. Um, so I'll show you the other one of these, and then I'll give you a bit of a closer look at the uh, at the basing. So that's one warp ent. Uh, do got another one here. Here he is. So again, try to give him a very different pose, different face, different aesthetic. Again, he's covered in these little, little, little wormy gribblies. Um, he's got his staff. Got his tentacles. So like vines or something. And there we go. A couple of vortex beasts or a couple of war pens. So. And again, so much fun painting these models. And you got, and this is these are the kits that are on about where you get so many, so many extra bits, so many extra pieces. You know, managed to get so much mileage out of all these kits for all of my conversions and um, all the bits and bobs that we've that we've stuck elsewhere. There we go. I'm gonna I'm gonna try and zoom in here and give you a little bit of a closer look at the basing here. So we've just zoomed in here to give you a little look at the uh, the bases. Very. Very different to any kind of basing I've ever done before. Um, I'm very pleased with the way it's turned out. I wanted to go for a lush sort of landscape, uh, real lush, grassy, uh, flowery, shrubby, but with lots of but with lots of like barky earthiness to it as well. Lots of like um, muddy ground. Uh, I wanted the colours as well to be uh, sort of unnatural colours, like lush green, lush pinks, uh, but almost like a little bit, a little bit too lush, uh, a little bit unnatural. So almost a little too bright, perhaps, um, just to sort of, well, to sort of try try and create the atmosphere that this is a this is a lush natural uh, world, uh, realm, world, whatever. But um, but it's all fueled by chaos, so there is an unnaturalness to it, a sort of creepiness. It's not, it's not really pure nature. This is warp, warp nature. It's almost like if you to, if you explained to Zinch what a uh, what a lush spring landscape would look like, this is kind of what he would create. Um, I got the lovely, lovely water features going through as well. I wanted the, that extra pop of colour, the blue, um, the waters of spring. Uh, fueling the fueling the seeds of life and the, and the landscape there's another one I made a bit of a feature on this one a bit of a pond feature 
Um, so the nice big bases are a lovely opportunity to sort of really go to town on the basing. And there we go. I imagine one day I will we'll get around to doing a video where I show you how, where I explain and sort of demonstrate how to do these bases. But at the moment it's just a lot of variety of textures and things all slapped together. Lots of shrubs, grass and uh, flowers and the water effect is also extremely simple. Um, just a uh, AK water texture I think it was called. Just with a little bit of paint in there to give it the colour. There we go, I thought I'd just give you a nice little close up look at the basing. So those were the two war pens, the uh, well my version of a of a vortex beast anyway for the court of spring. Um, but um, the court obviously is going to need it's going to need some it's going to need some sorcerers, okay? And uh, and I, I do endeavour to have have a total of nine nine big characters, nine main nine main sorcerers in the court of spring. Nine, of course, the uh, the blessed number. So. Um, but I have, I have at the moment, I have five of them. I have five characters to show you here. So first of all, this one here. This is the Infernal Master, or my version of an Infernal Master anyway. Now these, uh, these characters, they don't have names yet. Not all of them. Well, one of them does. But I haven't worked out how to name them all yet. I've just been really enjoying putting the models together. And we'll come up with the names at some other point. Well, I've got some various ideas. I won't share too much about that just yet. But uh, but this Infernal Master here, I imagine this this chap here is 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 one of the ones responsible for doing all the sort of mutations and uh, remember the uh, the cultists and the uh, the cultists here and the Chaos Spawn, so the the rootlings and the branchlings. Sorry, the the root spawn and the branch spawn. Um, the ones, you know, the, the humans and the Astartes that have been twisted and warped and and, uh, and changed up to make these me, these creepy creatures. Well, I reckon this Infernal Master here is probably the one who's responsible for the uh, for making that happen, or you know, the process of it happening. He's got his ritual knife here, and um, yeah, this is a, this is a, a branch witch from the Sylvan F, quite an old model now, but a very, very nice one, I think. Very, very cool. And uh, he's got some exalted sorcerer power armor in him. A couple of brazier, braziers, braziers, I think that's something different. <laughs> the flaming pots on there, on the top there, very reminiscent of the actual um, Infernal Master model. Now I will take, I will get a Fer Infernal Master model, the official one at some point, but I think I'll turn him into something else something else. I wanted a very unique Infernal Master here, so this is completely kit bashed from scratch. Um, thing, there's all sorts in here, Exalted Sorcerer bits, um, the uh, the Branch Witch bits, um, other various bits from some Sylvan F models. Yeah, I'm really pleased with the way he's come out. So, that's my Infernal Master. So we've got all the Zangor stuff that we looked at earlier, the, uh, the regular Zangors and the Zangord uh, Zango Enlightened, so in, in the Court of Spring that would be the saplings and the sapling bloomed uh, but we're also going to need a sapling bloomed shaman, so a, a Zango shaman and that's what this chap here is. So this is my Zango shaman uh, and he's basically a, a kit bash of again some bits of exalted sorcerers Bits from that special Underworlds box that I talked about. Um, I, I, I cannot seem to remember the name. I'll put it. I'll put it as a, a written description in the video here. But there's a couple of bits taken from that. But there's also, uh, oh yeah, the wings are taken from a Gossard Mid Archer, uh, and we've got Druanti here, the Arch Revenant. That's his helmet there. Um, amongst, yeah, uh, most of the model is that I think I swapped around this leg I think I cut the leg off at the leg here and gave a slightly different angled one stuck it on this on this rocky stone bit there and we've got one of the uh, starves from the exalted sorcerer boxes or it could be it's either from the exalted sorcerer or the um, or the terminators I think I think actually the the stick with the hand 
think that's actually Durante's uh, spear and I chopped the end off the spear and replaced it with one of the tops with one of the staff tops so this is uh, this is a Zangle Shaman or a sapling bloomed Shaman uh, there we go. Uh, next up, we've got an absolutely bonkers model for you here. This is a um, uh, this is going to be a, an exalted sorcerer. Um, let's bring him out here. There he is, exalted sorcerer. And again, I don't have names for them yet. Uh, not all of them. I do for one of them. We'll get to that. But uh, I don't have a name for them yet. But he's going to have a title. Uh, I'm gonna. He's gonna be some some sort of name, and his title will probably be something along the lines of uh, the Vine Shrike. Uh, I've tried to go for a, the sort of heavy sort of bird theme here. So there's lots of birdy bits on the top of his helmet there, on uh, on this these sort of ornate armor bits on his uh, backpack there, on the end of his staff here. Uh, he's got these. He's actually got Druanti's wings. So. Um, Durante the Arch Revenant, the, the model that this one came from, actually has a very big special pair of wings which look like this. Uh, but they actually look more birdy, so I took them off of Durante and I put them on the Exalted Sorcerer here. Um, really give him that sort of uh, birdish aesthetic. Um, and of course he's got all the vines as well. He's got all the vines. See there is a bird a, a very real bird called a shrike, uh, which has a curious habit of impaling its dinner upon uh, upon thorns. Um, you see, and uh, so I, I've got a. Um, that was kind of the theme with here. Uh, again, there's the um, these bits of vines at the bottom. Again, it's from that same Underworlds kit uh, with the sort of unique tree revenants in. Uh, there's some various other little bits all over the place. There's so many different models that have come into this one. The exotic sorcerer. Uh, the, uh, the 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 um, that underworld's kit, uh, Durante's wings. I think the top bit there is from the underworld's kit as well. Uh, Exalted sorcerer. I think it's all from the Exalted sorcerer. But then you've got these vines here, which are from um, I think from uh, some tree revenants. Various other little bits and bobs. Uh, but yeah, this is my Exalted Sorcerer. Uh, anything that's got wings, assume that that's a disc, of course. So, um, uh, the, the Zangor Shaman is on a disc. Zangor and Lightning are on discs. Uh, so they've all got wings. So this chap, uh, he'll be on a disc as well, represented by his um, ethereal wings. So, here he is. This is the Vine Shrike. This is my, one of the top dogs. This is a Exalted Sorcerer the cult of spring but just quickly before we do move on actually one of the big themes about uh, the exalted court of spring and the sorcerers within the court um, it's all about sort of transcending um, into a purer form like so imagine a seed that's planted in the ground um, it grows it grows and then it and then it um, sh shoots out of the ground and then it blooms into a flower and becomes this beautiful thing or imagine like a, uh, a caterpillar um, goes into its cocoon and then it blooms as a as a, as a butterfly so they're all about uh, blooming and uh, transcending into their most beautiful and purest and truest and most powerful of forms um, so like the further down that path that the uh, the various sorcerers have gone the more sort of changes uh, and the more unrecognizable they will become um, so so the vine shrike here he's, he's pretty far down the route like his legs have all become his legs have become the Sylvan F style legs, um, and I think most of his power comes from this sort of like, this almost like giant skirt of vines, uh, and the, the vines um, sort of popping out of his back there. Um, and of course the big, the big wings and stuff, so there's really only like half of the actual sort of Astarte Sorcerer still recognisable there. So he's pretty far down his path to ascension. Um, but I, yeah, that's kind of just the sort of theme. These uh, the great sorcerers uh, transcending and blooming into their truest, and most powerfulest of forms. So that little tangent is going to bring us quite nicely into the next character, um, somebody who has transcended pretty far down that down that path. Um, this is going to be a demon prince, and and these demon princes seem to be i think they're my favorite models to put together my favorite models to create uh to get you know to try to do something really unique and creative i mean we saw that with gargle rot 
um, and I've, I had so much fun making this demon prince again. Uh, I, making a demon prince again. And uh, So uh, again, I don't have a name for them, this one yet. Well, uh, names are coming, they're all sort of in the works. Um, I, I usually have very specific ideas of how I want to tackle the names. Um, but here we go, let me bring out the demon prince. And there she is. That's the Demon Prince. Uh, so you'll recognise this model fra as uh, Draker, I think it's pronounced. Draker, Draker. An absolutely wonderful, wonderful Silver Neff model. Absolutely stunning. Just utterly gorgeous. And uh, so I put it on a proper Demon Prince size base because the actual model, uh, the legs are much more stretched apart. It's on a much wider base. So what I did is a little bit of a um, little bit of magic magic fiddling there to um, squeeze the legs in and put them on this demon official demon prince size base here I think it's a 60 mil 60 uh, 60 millimeter base um, there we go so this is demon prince uh, thousand sons demon prince of the court of spring with hellforge sword this sort of, uh, I, as I said, all the blues and stuff is, uh, unless it's fabric, is supposed to be some sort of watery sort of things, like the waters of life running through the core of all these creatures and all these creations and stuff. But uh, so, but in this particular model, I sort of envision that this sword is actually made of water. And uh, maybe there's some extra little customization -y things that I could do to create a watery effect around this sword. But as the sword is like swinging and, and sparring, um, it's, it's sort of like sort of made of water like it's, it's keeps its form but it's sloshing around and and yeah it's this magical sort of sword that can cut straight through stuff or because it's sort of yeah anyway um, but that's the idea the the water sword the sword is from a uh, it's one from one of the tree lords again uh, just this massive sword it just looks so cool on this demon prince uh, huge help for sword and I had to give it some wings as well and I think the wings just absolutely, absolutely really suit this model. It just looks almost like a, some sort of weird pixie fairy type, type horrible thing with a sting in its tail. With a, you know, it's made of this some sort of like, uh, almost like a beehive. Um, really just absolutely love the theme of this model. It's so, so cool. And this swarm of, swarm of stinging creatures flying out of its arms and stuff. I'm getting distracted. The, the wings here, so the wings are actually from a plague drone. So the wings are from, from a Nurgle plague drone. And it was that sort of insectoid, uh, spiky with the holes and stuff, just absolutely seemed to really suit this model. Uh, so that was a wonderful sort of find. Um, ended up just having some Nurgle bits lying around. Uh, put them together with this model and I just thought it worked an absolute treat so I absolutely adore this model I think this could be my favorite one in the army but, um, but that's the demon prince that is my exalted demon prince in the court of spring but now we're going to bring out the final character here the final one and I've saved this one till last because this my friends this is the this is the warlord of the exalted court of spring this is the this is the top dog the head honcho the um the most exalted of all the sorcerers now i say that um i think this is probably an army where um where the, the warlord maybe will dip you know could could waver and change i think that the in the exalted court of spring you've got the nine sorcerers and i think I think most of them, they obviously with like all thousand sons, they never get on with each other. They're all deceptive and stabbing each other in the back. But in the Court of Spring, there's the nine sorcerers, and I think they probably all fight for fight for dominance. Um, they probably fight for dominance amongst themselves, you know. But um, in game wise, um, I, you do have to select a warlord, and so the the sorcerer that I believe to be the most exalted um, of all. The exalted court of spring the most exalted of the nine uh, would have to be this one here and this is my so this is the warlord of the court of spring the most exalted this is this is harrod ichaban the ruinous breeze the first storm of spring sower of the seeds of life 
So there we go. This is the um, this is a War Song Revenant. This model is the War Song Revenant, I believe. Um, and it comes on a much bigger base. There's lots going on, but this is the. Uh, but I've condensed it as small as possible um, for an Araman size base. And the base is still actually a tiny little bit big, but I really don't think anybody's going to notice. It's quite a small base as it is. It's only a 50. Uh, I believe, yeah, it's only a 50 mil. Should be a 40, but it's only a 50. But I don't think anybody's going to mind. Um, I wanted a nice, imposing sort of creature, uh, a nice, imposing demon type figure to be, to be the most exalted of all the core of spring. And and that's really why is the, there is nothing of the Astartes left in this creature. There's not a shadow of it, not a shadow of him left. Well, you know, maybe bits within, but visually, there's absolutely nothing left here. He's fully become become the demon of the sort of Zangor style variety, so of the sapling blooms, saplings, and the sapling bloomed. Um, he's of that sort of that sort of ilk, you see. Um, but yeah, this is Harad Ikaban, Harad Ikaban. And that is a play on the words, uh, the Japanese words, uh, Hara Ichiban. Um, and Hara Ichiban is basically, um, it's basically the name given to the first, I think it's the first storm of spring. Uh, so the first, like, the big change in the seasons in Japanese, um, in, in, the big change in the seasons in Japan. Um, a big breeze that comes through and blows all the blossoms and, or something like that, so and it signifies the beginning of spring in Japan. I've probably absolutely murdered that description, so if, if there's any, any, any Japanese people what, tuning in, or just Japanese lovers, then I, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> but um, it's something along those lines, the um, Harad Ichiban. Um, so I played on that word, and his name is Harad Ichiban. So, and there he is, the ruinous breeze, the first storm of spring. Um, he comes through like an absolute wrecking ball, Miley Cyrus style, uh, mortal wounding the mess out of everything. Um, there he is. He's got the black flute there, as opposed to the black staff of uh, Araman. Um, well, there we go. Absolutely adore this model. It's one of my favourite models. Again, the GW have done. There's so much cool stuff in the in the uh, in the uh, in the Silver F range. There he is, the Warlord, the most exalted of the Court of Spring, Harad Ikavan. Yeah, I'm not sure if I actually made this clear, but in game he's uh, I use him as an Araman. So I use the data sheet as Araman, uh, but this is a different model. It's not Araman, this is this is Harad Ikavan. Um but I use the data sheet uh, of Araman as a bit of an archetype, you see, for the most uh, for this sorcerer, because I wanted him to be the most powerful powerful sorceress data sheet in the book uh, which of course is Araman with the exception of Magnus uh, of course but we'll talk about Magnus in, in a minute um, but this is the last this is the last model uh, in the Exalted Court of Spring this is the uh, last model in the collection there's still lots that I want to get um, but uh, what we'll do now is we'll zoom back out we'll set all the models up give you a nice big look at, at the whole collection together uh, I'll talk a little bit more about about the collection and some other things that I want to do with it, and then uh, at that point we'll start wrapping this start wrapping this video up. Well, here you go, then, my friends. This is the Exalted Court of Spring in its full in its full glory. This is the full collection. These are all the models that we've just looked at. So, uh, but there it is. I'm uh, yeah. So uh, just a, a little bit of uh, where to go now with this. Um, there are still more units that I would like. Um, I would like uh, definitely like some more uh, rubric marines here. Uh, I feel like a couple of squad, a couple of little squads of five, uh, but this time with the uh, with the combi with uh, the inferno bolters instead of the flamers. So maybe a couple of little squads of of those with the with the bolters. That'd be really nice. Uh, I could see myself maybe doing a a third hell brute, a third tree brute at the back there. Uh, maybe expand on that on the sort of machine meets nature elements of the army uh, perhaps another another forge fiend and uh, I could see I, I actually got a really nice idea about how I how I would quite like to do a, a defiler so maybe a defiler in the army as well 
I've got an interesting um, idea that I'm brewing about how we could do quite a nice conversion for a defiler. But the main thing that I really want to expand on uh, with the Court of Spring is uh, is the Court of Nine, the Nine Sorcerers. Um, there have got to be nine, of course, the, the blessed number of saints. So within the court, there will always be there will always be nine. There will only ever nine, and if one of them one of them is kicked out, then somebody else will replace. Or you know, there, there'll always be nine. So at the moment, we've got um, well, the Infernal Master in there, the Exalted Sorcerer, you know, the Fine Shrike there. We've got um, we've got uh, my Araman figure here, which is Harra Ikaban, Harra Dikaban. Uh, we've got the uh, Zangle Shaman there and a Demon Prince at the back. So one, two, three, four, five. We've got five, five sort of sorceress figures. Um, you know, at the sort of top tier, or you know, at the, like the commanding level, the sort of court, uh, t top of the court level. Um, so another four sorcerers that we can make here. And I've got some ideas about how we are, how I want to do that. A few more sort of simple exalted sorcerer style stuff. I think um, oh, I really like to use the Infernal Master, the official of the Infernal Master model. Um, there's a couple of other models out there that I could see myself using. Um, maybe give them sort of slightly different loadouts. Maybe one of them could have a could have one of the Prospering Capeches or something like that. Um, definitely see myself making another Demon Prince. Actually, we could. Uh, there's the uh, the Lady of the Lady of the Vines. I think she'd make a, a very cool Demon Prince. Um, so a demon prince there. Um, so four more sorcerers to make it up to nine, but then also we've got the arch demon of spring as well. Running through the models and stuff, I think I, I made mention about Magnus. Um, so I'm not going to have Magnus in this army. This uh, Magnus is too too specific, um, too too unique. Magnus is Magnus, you know. Um, he doesn't belong in the Court of Spring, but what I feel like I could do is I could use the data sheet of Magnus, use Magnus's data sheet because he's like demonic Primarch demigod sort of level um, data sheet stuff, isn't he? So we'll use the data sheet of Magnus, but we'll create our own model, um, our own like giant demonic centerpiece type model um, to be the Arch Demon. Of spring, and um, that is the demon who's fueling this little, this warp entity, if you like. Um, so, and I've got, uh, I shan't tell you too much about it, but I've got a really, really cool idea as to about how I think I'm going to tackle that, that figure. Um, so, having just mentioned uh, the arch demon of spring, let me just uh, tell you a little bit about uh, the narrative behind this force and what it's all about. Yeah, so the Archdemon of Spring, this uh, this sort of um, demigod style warp entity figure um, that is responsible for the fueling of this force. This is um, so I'm I'm envisioning that uh, this demon, this creature, is a child of Zinch. Is a child of Zinch. Zinch has had a baby. <laughs> But um, so I feel like it's going to be. I'm going to call it she because I feel like it's going to have a sort of more feminine appearance to it. So uh, uh, the the Archdemon of Spring, she is a child of Zinch, and so she's a demigod. Its own warp, its own warp entity, its own warp force, fueled by its own very specific, um, very specific um, feelings and emotions. So what exactly is it that fuels uh, the great arc? The, the arch demon of spring, the sower of the seeds of life. Well, it is just that. It is, it is the seeds of life. It is, it's the forces of nature. It's the tenacious, unrelenting force of nature and the natural world. Now, Zinch doesn't really get involved with the, with natural things. Um, seems to have a bit of a dis distaste for um, the sort of organic natural world, you know, sorcery and and, and uh, magical and all that sort of stuff, but there is a child of Zinch who is who is more focused towards that element of things. Um, isn't just as simple as that. Um, it's all about the the, uh, the the power and the force and the the utter the utter devastation and fury of things such as like natural disaster, but the the tenacious, unrelenting will of nature, of um, 
Well, because well, you see, nature finds a way. It always finds a way, and it, it will, always seems to be able to thrive, no matter how grim and horrible the conditions seem to get. Um, even in the most unlikely of places, even the most hostile of places. Like, and I'm talking about the like the real world here. Think about like the most hostile places on earth. You, this life still finds a way to survive and to grow and and to to develop in these in these places but that all that i just said there that speaks more towards the sort of personality of of the arch demon and the force that, that that she creates you know this um the force of spring um but obviously uh chaos needs to be fueled by emotion so the emotions that we're talking about here that are that fuel that fuel the arch demon of spring so we're talking about things like hope, simple hope. We're talking about things like the unconditional will to survive, the unconditional will to be alive. So imagine the last dying breath somebody makes, the one final cling to the hope of being alive as the fear sets in and they fade away. It's that, that final little breath of hope, that final little yearning to be alive. It's things such as that. It's the enslaving sense of of maintaining your mortality, um, and no matter how grim dark it gets as well, because like the grim darkness of the far future is is so bleak and so horrific and tragic, and and you know you listen to the books and, and things, and you read about all the all the all the all the basic people, just the just the everyday humans who are who live these pretty miserable lives but no matter how grim dark and miserable their existence seems to get they just seem to keep carrying it on and just to keep grinding away um and maintaining maintaining life it's that the it's almost like a sort of preternatural uh primordial sort of sort of sort of mentality sort of um sort of drive to just be alive and to keep surviving and and um, this is something that I've, this is something that I've discovered myself. Um, if you watched my "This Hobby Is Chaos" video, um, you will know that I've had a very dark and very difficult year over the past year. And and I I say this with the with the greatest amount of respect for the subject. Um, um, but there have been times in there, there's been times in my life where where I have not wished to be here, and uh, I do not I have not wished. To be a, to be around, to be a, um, to be alive, um, because of how how miserable things seem to be, or how how dark things have got, or you feel like you've lost, you feel like you've lost what makes you you, or you feel like you've lost the, you've lost the will to be here, um, and even in the sort of darkest times where you're just getting through a day at a time, an hour at a time, a minute at a time. Um, and you feel like that's all you are is just all you are is just surviving um, and and but you do it you, you you keep going and you do survive and you just it's unexplainable um, it's miserable but you just there's something in you that something deep within the core of, of, of humankind um, to just survive and keep clinging to life um, and hopefully uh, things will pass and and you will bloom into a into a transcended stronger and hopefully um, happier version of yourself and I apologize if my my musings um, got a little bit heavy for your taste there um, but um, but I really just wanted to explain what fueled the creation of this army um, because I feel like uh, and um, I say this humbly um, I feel like and, and I'm not ashamed to admit that I'm very very proud of this army I'm very very proud of this army um, I feel like I've achieved things in my own little hobby world um, that, that I haven't achieved with any of my other armies um, I really feel like I've I've um, uh, I've gone to a very, very cool place um, with the creation of this force for myself in my in my own little hobby world, 
and uh, I feel a bit, I feel a, well, I'm feeling a little bit uncomfortable just <laughs> picking myself up here, but it's not really not what I'm trying to do. I just, uh, like I said, I wanted to create something that was that looked pretty and elegant and passionate um, and full of life, and that is what I created, and it was created out of darkness, you know. It was created out of darkness. It was created during the darkest period of my life. Um, but that's kind of what a flower is, you know. Uh, you plant a seed and it stays in the dark, in the wet dirt, in the mud, uh, underground. It stays in the dark for a long period of time until eventually it reaches up and it, and it, it gets its first taste of light. Um, it, it meets the sun and then it continues to grow and it blooms and flourishes into a flower. And that's kind of the... The, uh, that's kind of the philosophical journey that I went on with this army. It was created in darkness, uh, and now it has bloomed um, in all its in all its prettiness. <laughs> I'm going to stop with all the musings and the self-reflection now, but um, I just, I, it's been an absolute pleasure to to share this army with you. Uh, here today. I, I really really hope that you've enjoyed the video. I really hope that you've enjoyed a nice close look at look at all the all the units. Um, I really hope that you've enjoyed welcoming the exalted court of spring to the channel. The fifth army on Winter Wizard 7, my fifth faction, the Thousand Sons. So if you have enjoyed the video today then then a like and a comment would be very very much appreciated. It, it really helps the channel and if you'd like to see more of what goes on here inside the frozen fortress then perhaps you'll also consider becoming a subscriber and so once again whoever you are thank you ever so much for joining me today we'll round off the welcoming of the exalted court of spring to the channel by uttering the simple words all is dust although perhaps in this particular case all is sawdust and on that bombshell i'm winter wizard Dimu is there somewhere through the trees, and as always, for now, keep it frosty.